I'm here with Chris Cabot, Esquire. Do I have to say Esquire? You, you don't, but I love the way you say it, so keep saying it. Esquire. All right, now, now tell the folks out there uh, what kind of people you represent. Sure. No, absolutely. I'm happy to. I work with folks in music, film, sports, television, entertainment. Some of the clients I represent in the music world are Rob Allen, Corot Disturbia for Rihanna, Forever for Chris Brown, Big King did Icebox for... For Omarion, he did Carrie Hilson's last single called Slow Dance. And when I say did, I mean produced. Um, Darren Baker, he produced Lolly Lolly for 3 Six Mafia, also wrote and performed on The Hook. Rachel Noel is the manager of the Jackie Boys. They co-wrote Sugar for Flo Rida. They also just co-wrote Madonna's new single called Revolver. Um, great new group out of L.A. They're called The Squares. You're going to be hearing about them real soon. We're finishing up a bidding war. I represent two of the four members of the group, um, Dominique Ten beats Cohill, Britain, Britty Shaw. Those guys also write and produce the music. They're signed to a music publishing deal with Rondo Entertainment, Universal Music Company, through Damon Thomas, formerly the Underdogs. But be ready, because this group, I think Black Eyed Peas, meets America's Best Dance Crew. You're going to see it all over the world, literally, literally. Would you say that you're a master negotiator? I, I, I'd say I'm good at what I do. You know, I'd okay. say I'm good at what I do. But I think more than anything, what I what separates me from a lot of other en entertainment attorneys, I've had a lot of people leave other quote unquote big New York or big LA firms. You know, I'm based in Philadelphia. My wife has a big Irish family there. I never thought I was fair to uproot her from that. So okay. I just travel a little more and a lot more. Yeah. But I, I explain things to people. People know that when they work with me, they have a relationship. They know they can call my cell and they can say, hey, Chris, you know, I, I need to speak with you. I need to talk to you about something and the other. I just really had the honor of, um, I'm now representing Dina Manzo, of The Real Housewives of New Jersey. Right. She was someone I had met at a film premiere. We spoke. She had a lot of questions. And she just called me up one day and said, I, I really like the, the fact that I have a relationship with you. I'd like to work with you. And, and that's, I think, more than anything where my negotiations come because I negotiate with my cards up. I play poker with my cards face up. I negotiate based on facts. I do deals based on reality. The other side respects that. My clients understand where they're at. We end up doing some great deals because of it. How far do you think an unsigned artist can get without an entertainment attorney? You creatively can get very far. I mean, there's no question about that. From the creative standpoint, I have very, very little to do with that. And at the same time, and I say this, facetiously, but I, I always say when you're a client, you're part of Team Cabot or part of the Cabot family. And what I mean by that, though, more so than anything, it's like almost being a member of a fraternity or sorority where you have a commonality. And I don't, I don't really try to dot I's and cross T's, but I try to facilitate a lot of relationships and things like that. So with my clients, I'm always confident that I can always supplement their creative juices and their creative talent, help them make a lot of relationships. And then obviously when it comes to the business and legal standpoint, we can always get things done in a real nice way. Right. Now, you've kind of expanded into the sports world as well. So uh, tell me about the, the sports endeavors that you're in right now. Yeah, no, I've, I've had the, the blessing of working with a lot of great people in the sports world. Um, a client that a lot of folks know right now is Jimmy Rollins. Jimmy's the leadoff hitter and shortstop for the Philadelphia Phillies. Go Phils. Let's get another World Series championship here. But I, I work with Jimmy and all that stuff off the field. I am not his agent. I do not do his Phillies deal. But I do a lot of things with him outside of that, baseball-oriented. And then, obviously, he's got Jimmy Rollins Entertainment Group. Jimmy Rollins Entertainment Group is a multi-platform entertainment company, media, film, music. He's also a member of Team Red Bull. So we utilize Red Bull Studios in Santa Monica. That's a real great thing. And I also started my football agency two years ago. Just bluntly, and this isn't criticism, but I would, I would represent a number of athletes as their attorney. And then I would meet with their agents. And I just felt like a lot of them really weren't providing the service that... I knew that I could, so I figured, you know what, I'll just start this, really encapsulate everything. So, got a couple of great ball players right now. Um, Darrell Blackman, who's worked with the Packers, went to camp with the Packers. I'm now in my recruiting class for 2010 draft. Got some great guys there, so I'm really excited about 2010 draft. Continue to build and expand there. But I'm, my relationships with Major League Soccer, and I do a lot of consulting there. Professional bull riders do a lot of consulting there. And continue to do a lot of work on that end. Mm -hmm. And also on the technology side, I, I represent a company called Mercury Communications Group, general counsel for them. They handle all the websites for like uh, Serena Williams, Allen Iverson, um, a lot of the UFC stuff. 
and it's not only the websites, but all the you know the marketing, communications, the newsletter, and everything like that. So yeah, I'm I'm very blessed to be deeply entrenched in the music, film, and sports worlds. And you're a young guy. What are you like, thirty? I'm thirty. Yeah, thirty this year. Okay. Okay. We share an age. <laughs> See that? Where do, my where do you see yourself at 40? That's a, that's a great question, and I get that. And I want to I wanna take it to a level of understanding, and I just want to be dead straight. I'm blessed. I'm abundantly blessed. The Lord has given me a talent to help people make a, a God-given career out of their own God-given talents. I, I say what I mean. I mean what I say. I value relationships over money, and I'm willing to go the extra mile for people. And that is what has separated me, I think, from so many other people. I don't believe I have any competitors. I believe the Lord has given me a talent. It was my destiny to find it. I found it by the grace of God. And now the race of life is me versus my potential. There's really no one else involved. So at 40 years old, I would want to hope that the name Chris Cabot is still synonymous with authenticity, with sincerity, with good work, with promises being meant, promises being kept. And just continue to have the blessing of working with people. I've, I've got a wonderful wife. I've got a great family. They're healthy. That's really all I can ask for. And just continue to touch people and help them make a career. That's, that's where I want to continue to be. How important do you think music seminars like this one are for the unsigned artists? Because I know you do a lot of workshops as well out in, out in Philly. So how important are these workshops and seminars to the artists? Uh, these, these are great. The, you talked about the workshops. The workshops are something I started along with Lloyd Remick, who I work with, and I'm blessed to have him as my mentor. That's, that's somewhere where we really teach people. We limit 20 people to really teach them on a given topic, whether it be music publishing or recording or whatever. But when you come to a large seminar like this, you walk in the door and you have access to meet so many great people. And when you come here to New England Music Seminar, you've got people like yourself, and you've got people like June Archer, you've got people like Jay Hatch, you've got people like Don and Napoli. I mean, guys and, and girls who have come to this area and just are so on point with what they do and are really great people. You know, I'm a firm believer that good people got to stick together. When you can come to a seminar like this, you can network and meet so many people. And if you're serious about what you're doing, you can build those relationships and further it and just really grow so much. This is a relation. This is a business of relationships. Mm -hmm. It's about starting relationships, building relationships, and then furthering them. And you can do that here. And I think it's funny how some artists have music where they talk about the fancy cars and the the, the females and the jewelry, but then they don't spend the hundred bucks for a ticket for a seminar. I I, I just find that very funny. Would you say Would you say that those people don't take it as serious as they should? Well, when you talk about lyrics in music, I, I'm a firm believer that the, the best recording artists are usually those who perform and record music that oftentimes they end up writing themselves because they're writing from their heart and they're writing something that's real to them and that's authentic to them. And if, hey man, if Chains and the club and the street is authentic to you, it's going to resonate with the record. It's going to be a good record. But sure, there, you know, there are folks who are saying, you know, I can't afford this a ticket or something like that. And yeah, there, there's definitely some hypocrisy to that. If you're saying that you've got this, but then you aren't willing to spend to further invest in yourself, there's hypocrisy in it. But more than anything, I mean, the best investments you can make are in yourself, in life, are always in yourself. And in, even in our own practice and everything that I do, it's a very expensive practice to be in. But I know at the end of the day, any money I spend in furthering myself and investing in myself is all going to benefit me, my family, and it's of course going to benefit clientele as well. Absolutely. Now, just to tell the folks out there how important it is to have an entertainment attorney, the On Ear Idiots EPK DVD has been put in the mail <laughs> and has, been, re and has been, been received, received and we're sure. waiting for the viewing <laughs> pleasure to kick in. So that's how important someone like Chris Cabot is. And, um, you know, I hope, I hope that the people out there that are trying to be in entertainment I'm hoping that the knowledge has been shed to them to go get themselves an entertainment attorney because it's very, very important. Yeah, well, I'd love to speak to that for a second. I mean, the reality of it is the practice of law is a business. You know, there usually is a financial aspect involved. And a lot of times when people hear the word attorney or lawyer, they just think legal fees and they want to pass out and stuff like that, just even thinking about it. But I've always, always, always have encouraged people more than anything you may not have a deal on the table. You may not have a real business component yet to your art. 
let's build a relationship. Let's start a relationship. Let's build a relationship. So when that time comes, you'll have that. But another point, too, is that, and I've, my clients tell me this, that they have a relationship with me. They know they can reach me in my cell. They know we can talk. They know I care about them. They know I care about their family. It's not just a, it's not just a, always a business conversation. And that means a lot. I mean, it really means a lot to have anyone on your team, whether it's your manager, your accountant, your producer, your engineer, your publicist, your web person, to under, really understand what you're about and what you do. And, I, and that really even crosses over into the legal world. So more than anything, you know, build with someone, build with an attorney who understands you, who cares about you as a person, and that will only solidify the relationship. Obviously, I do that for my people. And I mean, I'm, I'm here today to meet people. Every person I meet, they ask me for a card, I ask them for their card. I want to, I want to continue to grow relationships. And if they don't have a card, I ask them to write it down, their information down the back of one of mine. Because it's, it's so important to build relationships, not unilaterally, but dual. Very cool. Chris Cab, I appreciate your time, man. Always.